Hello everyone. Thank you for tuning in for today's Focus with Simply Fresh. My name is Chubba, Supplier Relations Executive at the ACS. So today's session will begin with a short presentation from Sarah Johnson, Head of Retailer Engagement at the ACS, just giving a short overview of the sector. And this will be followed by Nick Hartwell, Trading Controller at Simply Fresh, to provide us an insight into Simply Fresh. Then we will have a chance to ask Nick any questions afterwards. So if you have any, then please do use the chat function below um, during the session and we will ask those after, after the presentations. So with that in mind, uh, over to you, Sarah, for the presentation. Um, thank you very much, um, Chaba. Right, let me just um, share my screen. So good morning, everybody. Um, as um, Chaba said, I'm Sarah Johnson, Head of Retailer Engagement at ACS. Um, I'm just going to um, do an overview of who ACS are, what we do, um, and then some information on the sector, um, the impact of COVID and some kind of um, looking towards um, the future. Um, so first of all, who we are, we represent um, 33,500 um, suppliers, uh, sorry, retailers. Um, as you can see there, that covers both um, uh, four courts um, and multiple symbol and um, independence. And we also have a number of supplier um, members. So those of you here today are either from our premier club um, or our club. So thank you ever so much for all your support. We really appreciate it. Um, so what ACS do, does, we, we kind of can fit into three pillars, um, campaign, learn and connect. Um, so everything that we do, we will we'll fit into one of those. Um, so when we're looking at um, our current um, campaigning policies, that's at the moment um, the three shop kind, DRS and HFSS. Um, so those of you who haven't seen, and please have a look on Twitter and follow um, and sign up. Um, the shop kind campaign, which launched on Monday, um, is um, raising awareness of um, abuse and violence towards um, shop workers. Um, DRS, the deposit return scheme, um, was delayed slightly, but is coming in 2024. Um, so with that and with um, the HFSS, high fat sugar salt um, uh, uh, regulations, we work with government to um, to try and help and them understand the impact it will have on stores and also make sure that the regulations um, are appropriate. Um, and there's information about everything that I'm talking about on our website. I will also um, record and we'll send out any um, the recording afterwards and also the slides. Um, so just to put into context about the convenience sector. Um, obviously, for every data set, you have to have a definition of a convenience store. This is for data, not for ACS. So if you want to join ACS as a retailer, um, you can do. We don't put any restrictions on that. Um, but in terms of a uh, definition, it has to be under 3000 square foot. Uh, that's basically a doubles tennis court. Um, and those that are under 3000 square foot um, are basically not subject to the Sunday Trading Act. Um, and we also have seen that government tend to use that as, as the definition. However, I should say they're not doing that for HFSS. So we produce a lot of information um, and some of the information I'm doing now is out of the local shop report um, that we launched last year. Our next one will be um, launched in September. So there are 46,955 convenience stores in the UK and we worked out um, where they are geographically and where I am currently in Sunny Fleet um, in the southeast, we have one for every 1,585 stores, uh, people, sorry, not stores. Um, we also looked at where they were in terms of rural, suburban and urban and basically they are everywhere. Um, we also looked at where they are in terms of um, on the high street or where they are um, located and everybody, um, they're basically everywhere, but predominantly we're looking at isolated stores and those located on a small parade. 
So when we talk about stalls, there are a number of different types. Uh, there are in fact six different types of stalls. Um, so I'm gonna try and explain them. Obviously, if you've got any questions, I'm happy to answer them afterwards. So I'm going to start um, with the unaffiliated independents. So for example, if I decided tomorrow to leave ACS and open a store, um, I put Johnson stores across the fascia, I bought my products from a local cash and carry or a bigger hypermarket, basically put my stock wherever I wanted, that's an unaffiliated independent. Um, the next step, if I decided to, to get a bit of help, then there's, um, I could join a symbol group. Uh, so these are, they're still independent retailers, um, but each of the symbol groups offers a certain uh, package to join. So obviously Nick's going to go into to what it is for um, Simply Fresh um, shortly, um, but they're all very different. So some like Budgins have, uh, you have to buy quite a lot of the products directly through them, but some of the, the other smaller ones um, or more low level ones, you don't have to. Um, and it does mean that you can go into a premier store, say in Billericay, and it'll be very different than a premier store in Farnborough. because they're owned by completely different people. Um, there's also a franchise. So franchise is kind of in between. So if you're, some people look at it as a kind of an introduction to retailing. So if you're quite new and you've never done it before, it's a very hand-holding experience. The head office will guide you over where you put your products, what you sell them for, where you buy them, everything. Um, and so it's, it's quite a good introduction to how to do it. Um, we've then got multiples. So these are where basically head office run the, the show. The store manager can't decide where he puts things. Um, he has no control over, over price or promotions. It's all dealt with, with head office. And it does mean that if you go into a Tesco Express anywhere, they're basically all the same. Um, co-ops are run very similar to a multiple. The difference is the co-op itself is owned by, uh, by the members. And then finally, there's commissioned operators. These are um, uh, four courts. It's not a great way to retail, to be honest. It's, it's a lot of work for not a lot of money. Um, they get a small percentage of uh, everything they sell. Um, so we're looking at store types. We also have to look at um, where people buy them, their buying platforms, where the retailers are getting their products from. And this has changed and continues to change. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So um, Booker and Tesco were the big one that joined a few years ago. Um, and then um, we had the co-op nicer. So a lot of you will now see co-op products when you go into nicer stores. And then more recently, the best way cost cutter um, um, link up. Um, I, I think this will continue to change. It's changed quite a lot. I mean, the whole sector changes quite a lot, but I think we will see some more of, um, of this uh, moving together. Um, when we look at size, um, so um, the multiples have um, moved into the, the kind of bigger convenience stores. So the 2,000 to uh, 3,000 square foot because um, to take, um, um, to be able to use the Sunday trading laws. Um, so obviously they can open whenever they want. However, 72% uh, of the sector is owned by independents. Um, so we, the independents still have most of the sector. Uh, when we talk about opening hours, everybody thinks 7-Eleven because of the famous brand. We're actually more like 7 till 10. Uh, we do have some stores that are open 24 hours and then a few stores that close on a Sunday. So in terms of the sector as a whole, up till March 2020, when uh, the, we um, had the last uh, results, the value of sales was 44.7 billion, which is one uh, fifth of the grocery market. Um, we have seen, however, in the pandemic that although footfall has gone down, the average basket spend has gone up. So the um, sales has increased to quite a large extent. Um, the pandemics had had a good and bad effect on, on our sector. 
Um, we've seen that actually um, village, rural and urban stores have, have done really well. But on the flip side, forecourt city centres and transport hubs have really felt um, a real hit, um, obviously with people not going out and not travelling. Um, but then with city centres, with the working from home and also um, universities not work and not being there, they, you know, they've really suffered. Uh, and we're hoping to to see a, a rise in that with with the easing that we've seen recently. Um, let's, I'm going to look at categories now. So um, these are the figures for just independence. Um, and as you can see, um, quite traditionally, um, tobacco and alcohol are the two main categories with soft drinks um, at, as a number three. Um, when we look at it for the whole of the convenience market, tobacco and alcohol are still up the top, but um, chill foods is coming in as on a third. And when we look at what um, categories have been doing well during COVID, um, frozen um, kind of a category that I guess we, it came as a bit of a surprise. Um, I think because people are um, shopping less regularly, so they're, they're stocking their freezer up a bit more. Um, one of the other things we've seen um, throughout the pandemic is that um, there's been a change of um, buying habits um, and people, instead of um, buying small individual packs, they're going to bigger pack sizes, mainly because the whole impulse thing, people not going out, so they haven't needed to, to do that. We asked um, retailers what they are going to be focusing on in the, in the immediate future. Um, and Fresh is up there at the top. Um, I think one of the reasons for this is, although people have been doing a lot of online shopping, fruit and vegetables are a bit hit and miss. Um, and also we want, um, we're seeing that retailers are putting more into a kind of big whole shops and instead of just doing top up and fresh is a, is a key to that. Um, through the local shop report, we also looked at what um, was a, a positive impact into um, people's local area. And obviously we're really pleased that uh, number one was um, local shops and then post offices. And obviously we're in post offices as well. And a lot of that is driven from the services that we offer in store. Uh, as I said, um, post office is there, but also we're seeing some quite unusual things coming through. So things like dry cleaning, photo booths, all of these things just driving footfall. Um, but what we're also seeing is that um, instead of just having a category of say vape, they're actually put building almost like a little vape shop in, in store and the same with pharmacies. And obviously we've got post offices already. Um, so kind of con um, joining services together to make a bigger um, destination. But this um, slide was from uh, before the pandemic. Um, and um, as it says there, the, the most valuable services were cash machines, post office and click and collect. However, we have seen that um, both of those have been negatively impacted because of, the, of COVID. Um, obviously, coffee and bakery, people not going into work, not picking up their, their, you know, their morning coffee. So that has has had a massive impact as well. Um, looking towards tech in store, um, only 74% of um, stores have EPOS. Uh, we find that the ones that don't tend to be the unaffiliated independents, the much smaller CTNs. Um, the self-service checkouts is on the rise. It's quite slow. Um, and mainly that's because we um, it's universities and places where kind of the, the Generation Z uh, people who don't really want to interact, those are the people that we find um, who, who like those um, checkouts. Um, we're always encouraging our retailers to have a media presence and an online presence. Um, this especially um, during the pandemic because people were, were Googling where they could find things. And so um, just having something like Google My Business or Near Street has really helped um, to, to drive traffic to, to the stores. 
Um, I see TikTok's not on that list, but we are seeing a rise of some retailers um, doing TikTok uh, videos to, to kind of lift the spirits, I think, of, of retailers through um, recent months. Um, unsurprisingly, uh, we are um, through all generations. Um, the average age is actually 48. Um, and there's pretty much um, uh, an equal gender split of who comes into store. Uh, when we look at who, how far they travel, 80% um, are less than a mile. Um, this, these figures have changed again um, for the pandemic, but prior to that, 22% um, of customers were going in every day. And again, we would have seen that being kind of the older person who might only, um, uh, that might be the only people they see every day, which is why when we looked at the relationships with colleagues, 10% know their, um, the staff really well. 30% um, on the flip side don't interact with them at all. And those tend to be the ones that like the um, self-service checkout. They just want to buy what they want, get in, get out as quickly as possible and not speak to anybody. But we also know how important um, community is to um, retailers and how much they give to their um, to their communities. Um, we've had, I mean, the picture there of, of Raj Chandarana um, supporting the um, uh, free meals for school, um, Susan Collin Lee supporting her um, local charities, and also um, recently we've um, had the Raj Agarwal um, do what Raj would do. So really important doing things in our communities. Um, and it's, it's just a really good way to, to say thank you to the community and to keep people coming back into store. So moving on to look at um, basket spend. Um, in 2020, the average basket spend was £7.46. This changed quite considerably. Um, so by the end of quarter four, we were up to £8.47. So the changing in the in buying habits were that people were visiting less often. They were shopping closer to home, but they were spending more money. Um, we've seen recently that um, older people have... Um, started going back into store, um, mainly because they've had at least one, if not both of their vaccines. Uh, one of the things we found was that actually older people were feeling that they were unfairly penalised by delivery charges and minimum spends. Um, I think with the delivery charge, one um, reason is that, to be honest, older people aren't used to doing takeaways. You know, most younger people wouldn't, ha wouldn't worry about spending, you know, an extra three pound on a pizza to have it delivered. Whereas that's not a, a usual behaviour for the, for those over sixty five, um, so that so that's kind of why I think that they they feel that way. Um, some good news coming through now with um, the easing of restrictions from April the twelfth. Uh, we saw that footfall. This is obviously the whole of retail was up by over a hundred percent. Not quite as good as the hairdressing salons that went up by five hundred percent. Um, but also all of this means good things for our retailers. So looking forward to summer, what are you going to do? Barbecues, picnics. So retailers are like, right, going to get barbecue food and going to get barbecues, getting ready to, to celebrate being out and about and having in store to dry footfall back in, in store what people need. And we also have seen that shopping habits are changing. Um, and so at the moment, eight out of 10 people say they will continue to shop locally, which is brilliant. And that's what we need to see. We, we don't want to lose the people who've, who've been coming to store during the pandemic and, and then them returning to supermarkets. We want to keep hold of them. Um, and there's some more research into different consumer tribes. So there's now uh, five new tribes. So uh, rewarders, not much money, but looking to enjoy life. Uh, resetters, looking beyond COVID to make life changes that reflect the bigger issues of climate and sustainability. Recovery, struggling before COVID and now hit by unemployment and reduced future opportunities. Rationers, surplus money to spend, but fearful of future austerity. And then revenge spenders, back with a bang, looking to make up for lost experiences. 
Um, and I'm sure you're all sitting there going, um, I wonder which one I go into. I think I'm definitely in Revenge Spenders. Um, but um, it's all information that retailers can take on board to understand that, re that consumers, there are still people who are going to be needing the food banks. They're still going to be needing all of that support that they were having before. But on the other hand, yes, you could get in some nice um, gin or some kind of top end products because there are people who are going to be spending a little bit more in store. Um, so it will be interesting to see how that pans out in the next year. And this is reason why um, uh, shoppers were using their convenience stores. They wanted to avoid crowded supermarkets. I mean, we've seen a lot of our retailers having traffic lights on the doors. Um, just to make sure there aren't too many people in store, but hasn't really followed through to be fair in the big supermarkets and kind of more difficult to do it. Um, so we can see why um, people feel more comfortable in store. Um, this um, is some really new information that we only received yesterday, which really surprised me, I have to say, that um, overall retail saw the highest number of job losses. I thought it was um, going to be hospitality, but that's also worth bearing in mind that, you know, there's, there's still a lot of people out there who are really struggling um, and will do uh, until we kind of get back to whatever normal is going to be in the future. One of the things we do know is that um, um, consumers want more locally sourced products. Um, and we've seen that retailers are looking for um, more options to get locally sourced products and um, more sustainable products. And of course, looking into um, the HFSS restrictions that are coming, we're seeing um, more um, healthy choices. Um, so a rise in healthy snacks. And again, the vegan that started with the January has, has continued through. And interestingly, um, sales of, of low and non-alcohol beer have risen in the past year. Um, I, uh, from my point of view, I always I thought everybody was drinking more. It might just be me, but the the uh, the news seemed to think that make it think that everybody was actually drinking more. But obviously, um, not people are turning to those those low alcohol um, options. We had summit um, last week, and one of the <coughs> questions we asked people um, was, "How will you be judging success over the next ten years?" And um, sustainability came out top, um, and I think that's um, reflected in a rise of of things like um, Too Good to Go and Gander, which are ways of uh, reducing food waste. Um, and also, we're seeing more and more retailers um, supplying to food banks. Um, to to get rid of waste and and to, to make sure that they're supporting their communities as well. Um, and also in store, I mean, this is um, Thornton's Budgins, who has always been quite a standout um, uh, sustainable environmentalist. Um, but we are seeing the rise of the um, packaging free aisles, also the take your own containers. Um, and this has also been reflected in um, delivery um, services, so co-op um, with their e-cargo delivery service. And I'm sure that you've all seen, if it, only in a picture, of the co-op um, little pods that are going around um, delivering in, in Milton Keynes. And that actually leads me quite well into um, talking about how delivery is impacted um, into convenience. Um, so when we did the local shop report, we said that only 17% did home delivery before lockdown. Um, but as you can see, um, it has been massively um, um, taken up now and over 600,000 deliveries a week are being done. 56% um, offering card not present. Um, the average basket spend was £8.50, but the actual basket spend for delivery went up to, at the most, at £32.49. Um, I've also heard some amazing stories about people doing delivery. So we had, I said at Summit, Linda um, from um, Laceby in, in the north, they do deliveries where the, where the retailers or the, the store um, workers, they pay for the shopping themselves and then take it to the to the customer and the customer reimburses them. And they spend time, they spend 20 minutes 
talking to that customer because it's the only interaction they have. So, you know, these retailers across the board are doing some amazing things to support um, their local communities and just to help um, and to help people um, during this um, horrible time. And to be fair, we've done we've done our, our, our what we can as well. So um, the amazing team at ACS put together this um, home delivery guidance really quickly um, once uh, we hit pandemic. I mean, we they did a lot of work on all the signage for um, social distancing and masks. But the home delivery guidance, because obviously there's rules and regulations around delivering alcohol and age restricted products. Um, so we got this out to everybody. As you can see, um, it's been viewed 30,000 times. So it's really, really giving retailers exactly what they needed at the time. So just looking ahead, um, finally, um, the, the grocery market um, is, is on, the, on the right, the convenience is on the rise. Obviously, online is the fastest growing channel um, and discounters um, also doing really well. But it is a really good, um, it's a good channel to be in. So we're really, um, we're really pleased to be here. And just to fi finally to say, uh, at Summit, we asked people, um, how are you expecting to feel over the next six months? And we're really pleased that most people said they were going to be more optimistic. So I think this is a really good sector to be in. Um, I hope you guys feel the same. Um, thanks very much. If you've got any questions at all, please put them on the chat and I will answer them at the end. Um, and I'm going to hand back to Chaba. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Sarah. Great overview. Um, yeah, as Sarah mentioned, if you do have any questions, please do use the Q&A function. Uh, but now we hand over to Nick. Uh, and if you could give us a short intro and then take us through your presentation, that would be great. Thanks, Nick. Sure. Thank you. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks for that presentation. Really, really interesting. Really good to get an overview on the market because I've not had a clear picture on the market for a few months as we've been very busy sort of introducing Simply Fresh. So um, great to meet everyone. A lot of people I see on the, on the participant list that I know and I've spoken to. So morning to you. Hope you're well. And the people that I haven't met before, morning to you too. I'm going to run through today a presentation pretty much about Simply Fresh and just talk you through route to market and some of the details. So I'll just bring the presentation up for you now. Can everyone see the presentation? Yep. You can see you can see it. Can you see it? you need to just put it on full screen? Yeah, for some reason it's not allowing me to share. Bear me a second. seconds to see if this is working nick would it work if you press present rather than share possibly quite possibly let's try that there we go can everyone see that yeah that's perfect can you see that yeah you're okay good stuff right okay so top line agenda for today uh, introduction to the team. I'll just talk you through. I haven't got a slide on the structure, but I'll talk you through the structure of the team and the people at Simply Fresh. Bit of an introduction, overview, and a little piece about route to market, which I think is quite important for you guys because there are two routes to market. And as Sarah showed in her presentation, the the markets are ever changing in terms of in terms of uh, in terms of the route to market. Bit about company history and some recognition, store development and future pipeline. IT and supply chain, back office and training, a little bit on EDLP strategy and range strategy, um, quite a detailed bit about promotions and how we structure the promotions and strategy. Um, and then a summary and at the end, do a little virtual tour. One of the most recent retailers that we recently signed up, that we've seen quite a lot of PR about. So uh, in terms of team structure, 
We have uh, Kashkira and Suljit Kira, who are two business owners, uh, very much multiple site owners. Um, don't tend to get too involved in the business because they're very busy running their running their business as it is, um, and obviously focusing in on retail and, and doing what they do. So, our, our MD is effectively a guy called Tim Chalk, who's ex Tesco's, ex Sainsbury's, really, really experienced guy. Um, Michael O'Loughlin is our chief operating officer. He's responsible. He's a forecourt background. He's responsible for onboarding retailers predominantly. And as I'm sure a lot of you would have seen, he's, he's been on the PR offensive talking about Simply Fresh and, uh, and uh, all of the benefits that, that Simply Fresh can bring to, to the retail to a number of retailers as we speak. Uh, Steve Drake, who is who is effectively my boss, uh, is the commercial director. He manages all the elements of trading, IT, supply chain and ops. Uh, obviously myself, I look after and manage price, range, promotions, NPD, done some work on planograms, uh, predominantly supplier management with you guys and talking to suppliers, hence obviously why I'm talking to you today. Uh, and I manage the relationship with, with Sainsbury's as well, sort of on a day-to-day -day basis. In our ops team, we've got uh, Gary Hill, Michael Bulks, Bruce uh, Wakeling, uh, Natasha, Richard and Katrina, who sort of manage some of the office and admin staff as well. So a fairly sort of uh, a fairly lean team, to be honest, in terms of symbol wholesale, uh, about 13 people in, um, in total managing the cost of business, obviously, as we as we look to grow. So, you know, effectively, I said I'd talk you through uh, Simply Fresh and who they are in terms of route to market. And, and, and uh, there's, there's two elements of this at the moment. So we've got franchise estate that, that move predominantly uh, via cost cutter, which now, now comes on the best way. But I think we've just recently signed a two year contract to um, extend that out. So, so that, will continue, that will just continue as business as usual through, through that route of which in there we've got about seven company owned stores. Um, but what I'm talking to you about today in the main really is about the Simply Fresh model and the JS element, the Sainsbury side of it and route to market, because that's the sort of, that's the newer side of the business. That's the focus side of the business and that's the side of the business that I work on. So that's what I'm going to be running through today in a little bit more detail. So effectively the ethos of, of Simply Fresh as a business is a lot more focused on fresh produce, fresh in-store bakery, good range of organic and free from products. So since obviously January 2020, Sainsbury's has been the wholesaler to Simply Fresh stores. Obviously that opens up a whole world of benefits for us in terms of, um, in terms of, I mean, what, what a range to choose from, six and a half thousand SKUs, um, covering all all the all the demographics in terms of you know we've got jay james we've got hubbard's we've got taste the difference you know just caters for every sort of consumer you know within our sector so we drive you know customer perceptions of quality value for money and innovation whilst enhancing profit and margin mix focus on sourcing as you can imagine live well for less which is quite interesting i think Sarah talking about sustainability really important because obviously there's a huge amount of sustainability work going on there at Sainsbury's and obviously the retailers will exclude you know get exclusive access to all of our um you know multi-award winning own label and own label ranges and look I was looking at this presentation earlier and thinking there's quite a lot in here about about JS and the power of JS and using their own brands and, look, and that's all fantastic but What's really important is brands. We know that. We know that. I've known that. Having spent 22 years in, in the convenience sector, brands are absolutely crucial um, to succeed. So as, as, as great as it is to have, obviously, all the access to all of this own brand and stuff, which is going to drive a lot of positives for, for retail and in, you know, in, across our retail customer base, they still very much want the basics and they still very much want you know, branded quality, you know, all the branded things element that that brings to, to the range essentially. So, so a little bit of recognition from our peers. Um, and look, I, this is, 
way before I joined the business. I've been in the business for six months now. But as you can see from the list there, you know, always winning, always winning awards. I get a lot of feedback, from, not just from suppliers, but from, from, from other retailers and people in the industry generally who just really, really like the look and feel of the fascia of, of Simply Fresh and, 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 and the lighting and the aesthetics and, and everything down to the shelving and all the detail. It's, it really is sort of best in class. So obviously a lot of awards that we've picked up along the way there, which has been positive. And this is this is the guy Steve Bassett that you would have seen lots about. So we've been on the PR offensive about um, about how um, how positive it's been. Obviously, um, we 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 tried the model, the, the JS model, obviously in our estate within our own stores, and that's great. That's 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 really important to do that. But I don't think anything can give you the feedback you need is actually doing it with a with. With, with a re, you know with a new retailer essentially one that's going to be really really sort of super critical of the supply chain the infrastructure the back office the it the delivery the promotions absolutely everything so steve's been great to have on board and it's proven to be a real success story for us his sales are 40 percent up um fantastic job and I, i'll talk i'll talk you more um, a little bit further in the presentation and certainly in, in the store tour around um, the success of that store and the first launch of, of the combined Sainsbury's range into, into Simply Fresh. So I'll come on onto that into a little bit more detail further in the presentation. So as I mentioned in store developments, that's what, that, that, that's what the store looked like, which is a huge improvement on, on where it was before. Um, stores in an interesting demographic so a mixture, a mixture really of social demographics. It's got it's got a large school nearby, so I see a lot of footfall, a lot of the children in the school, preschool, lunchtime, after school. Um, so really over indexes on on branded impulse, as you'd imagine, soft drinks, crisps and snacks, hot food does extremely well in the store. It's also quite a heavily skewed store to the weekend, so its sales perform really strongly. Um, really strongly at the weekend on take home um, and particularly on BWS as well. So it's, just, it's a strong, it's a strong store at the weekend in terms of, I think 70% of the sales of over the weekend, which is, which is a bit quite significant. It's a bit different for C stores in, in our, in our sector. So what simply fresh doing as well, also obviously really pushing the boundaries of convenience retailing this is a this is a um, look at one of our stores that's opening i believe next week in redditch uh where we're, with all going all going to plan because um, some of the timings have been moved on that a little bit because there's so much going into this store so really fantastic looking store uh, there's a carluccio's cafe that's being built into the store here so you can see that there's a seating area for about 50 or 60 in there and that's a that's a first of its kind actually just beating our friends sainsbury's to the punch on that because they've got a uh, carluccio's cafe going into one of their stores i believe in may 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 june time so um so that's a first for us which is fantastic and it's, it's just a great looking store four and a half thousand square feet uh it was an x m and s site previous to that quite a while ago so so, you know, we're always pushing boundaries and we're always always looking for exciting ways to develop sort of retail convenience. So so watch this space for that store. It'll be a really interesting store that, as I said, launches next week. So the supply chain of um, Simply Fresh is quite simple, obviously, with Sainsbury's. So six fresh deliveries a week, which is really significant, actually, um, really significant for our sector. So... I'm, I'm not sure that any, I don't think that anyone's offering six fresh deliveries a week and, um, and three ambient drop-offs as well. Uh, same reason themselves. I think they've won best supply chain, supply chain of the year award for the last six out of seven years. Um, I look, and it's a fantastic system and it works very, it works very well. Um, it works very well for us in the stores that we ran it in. So we had no, qualms that it was going to do exactly the same for the likes of Steve Bassett and other retailers we're looking to onboard. So, um, so yeah, so we really sort of utilize that strength as part of the model. As I've already said, ranging really important that there's just such a combination of, of range available to us. 
that we don't really need to look outside of that. I mean, we still utilize and use direct to store suppliers. There's no change in that. We don't dictate some, um, good relationships that retailers have built with local suppliers. We don't want to change any of that. And they're all absolutely welcome to carry that on. There's no stipulations in terms of how much Sainsbury's the retailers must buy, et cetera. So a really flexible, um, uh, really flexible model actually. And I should mention they, they, they really work really well support it with marketing and point of sale as well, which is, it was a bit of a surprise to me actually. I didn't know that Sainsbury's would give as much access to a lot of their um, point of sale material and certainly the use of the Sainsbury's logo on the fascia and on staff uniforms and things like that. They've been really susceptible to all of that, um, which is great because it shows that we're sort of working in a partnership, which is, which is all part of the plan. So look, clearly on the left side is, is, is more of a retail slide, I suppose, the connected independence. So, you know, take confidence in your retail journey that comes into your own dedicated tour guide, grow your business with focus planning, etc. cetera. Uh, you know, we've already mentioned that Simply Fresh IT is, it's got a fantastic auto replen system linked to the JS ordering systems. So set up to capacity. So there's literally nothing you do if you have a case of a product that's got 12 items in it will sell six of them when it gets to the six it automatically reorders the next case so um just seamless really um and and yeah it's proven to be you know proven to be a real winner in terms of in terms of where we've already launched it fantastic and the back office system and the it infrastructure that all goes with that all all of the usual gadgets that you'd expect to see with that and I can't, I'm not going to pretend that I'm any IT expert and go into any more detail than that but it, it works and it works very well and it's, it's delivered and that's good feedback we've had from the retailers that are using it already. So a little bit now about the Simply Fresh EDLP strategy. Um, not so we obviously look to leverage and maximize the strength for Sainsbury's brand on EDLP products why wouldn't we? You know, there's some really, um, really keen price points there with some really strong margins for the retailers. Uh, offer retailers choice on price competitiveness. So um, depending on their demographic. So if it's, as I've already mentioned, if it's a, if it's a sort of higher demographic retailer, then we'd probably look to have more taste of the difference in the range. If it was... Um, obviously a, low, a lower demographic, then you can use the likes, utilize the use of, you know, JS Basics, which has now changed a bit. It's J James and Hubbard's and some of the other brands that they've got going on. We'll look to improve the retailer's margin mix, obviously, as always, as we always do, which is great. So um, as Sarah mentioned earlier, basket spends on the increase. Fantastic. Uh, as basket spends go up, we expect them, you know, the margin mix to improve. Um, and we offer, a, you know, we offer about 50 to 100 KVI lines and we do some deals. We do some milk and bread combined deals, which I'll show on the next slide. Uh, and then obviously we try and do some multi buys where possible. So um, just across the standard range, just gives a better a feel across the better feel across the store in terms of um, in terms in terms of price perceptions and, and, and promotions. So improve the pricing on commodity lines as well. And look, implement some best in class seasonal ranges, um, which we've already done very successfully actually via, via Sainsbury. So, and I'll come on to that in, in a bit more detail. We've done some Valentine's, we've done some Mother's Day, and we've done some Easter stuff and introduced some products actually that ordinarily you think are really, um, really multiple products that you wouldn't expect to sell in convenience. I think we've sort of broken the back of some of that, some of that mystique already. And, and, and the theory that certain products that, that just don't sell well in convenience, we've, we've got some proof that that's not the case. And I can talk you through a couple of lines where we've, where we've done that as well. So promotional strategy is quite simple, really. Obviously you want to utilize the strength of Sainsbury's annual promotional offering. So, um, I work very closely with the, with the as 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 the, the rest of the Simply Fresh team with with the Sainsbury's team. We have two or three conference calls a week. We have direct access into their supply chain contacts. We have two national account managers who manage the account. 
Um, we have a link into their IT and we have a link into their trading, their wholesale trading team. So we talk to the likes of Richard Hodges and Lewis and George and all the people that manage the teams there. So, um, so we're really well connected in, in terms of, in terms of what we're doing and what we're trying to achieve. So we would look to cherry pick the very best deals, focus on market leading deals. This is where brands really come into their own. So important to get a number of suppliers on board to, to be supporting this. And we already have a, a great number of suppliers on board already supporting us, um, which is fantastic. So we just want to continue that. So strong focus on impulse deals, as we mentioned. Uh, really use the Sainsbury branded deals to overlay that often with the branded and get some EDLPs going and KVIs, which is great. And constantly review and involve considering seasonality as, as, as part of the promotional calendar. So the promotional calendar is, I think it's 18, 18 three weekly cycles for the year um, and all falls under the same sort of dates as, um, as Sainsbury's wholesale. But we can talk about that in more detail as and when, as and when I catch up with suppliers individually. Just an example there of some of the some of the offers that we put together. So I said we have a we have a bread and milk offer, and in some instances we have a bread, egg, and milk offer as well. And then some of the EDLP lines that we're looking to highlight or either run multi buys on. So this is another real, really big sort of win, I think, in convenience and certainly for us as well, is it the introduction of the fresh meal deals and dine-in solutions with simply as part of Simply Fresh, which is which has you know been really successful for us. And Steve Bassett's sort of and his store a testament to that as well. And again, I'll show you on the 3D tour where we've built a section actually into his chiller to to run this run run this type of deal constantly much like the frozen meal deals that we run the bundle deals at five pounds you know we we run them constantly just like we run this constantly and we do a little play on it with valentine's day and sort of seasonal things like that and bring that in as well so really you know a really what well, you know it's great to see and it's great to see it's great to see the likes of obviously being able to include bws in, into the deal and actually selling bws out of, out of the chilled food section as well which is sort of um fairly fairly new inconvenience really um lunchtime meal deal solution which is great obviously this is another really big win for for us and i think the industry as a whole very difficult to get a sandwich crisp and drink meal deal um into the in, into the mix and, and actually get it make it work not when you know don't you can't it doesn't work if you've got different components all over the place and you have to go here for the sandwich and here for the drink and somewhere else for the snack it has to be all together um, which we've got fantastic point of sale that dictates that as well always they're always improving it so we've just improved the meal deal and added another 50 or 60 lines to it because that's been reviewed by the by the Sainsbury's team as part of the recent range review so it's a great option there's there's huge amount of product choices and options in there for the consumer it's a footfall driver and it's it really is making you know that store in particular become more of a destination shop rather than just a top-up mission and uh, standing in the store yesterday seeing a lot of customers coming in we were there just before lunchtime and a lot of customers in there obviously as you can imagine literally buying their sandwich buying their drink and buying their crisps which is great to see so seasonal promotional activity and consumer leaflets, obviously we do all of that. We do all of the same sort of things that most of the recognized symbol retailers would do as you'd expect us to do. Um, so we pull together consumer leaflets. We've, we've had a little spin on Valentine's Day. We've done some stuff on Mother's Day and so on. So all, all of the usual things that you'd expect to see and all the usual support you'd expect a, a wholesaler stroke retailer to support your brands and push your brands out there and, and, and you know really drive awareness of those brands so we're aiming obviously for best in class in in um in terms of uh, gondola ends and this is quite a lot of work that we've done pulling this together so part of the promotional strategy as i've mentioned is taking those deals and then turning those deals into in, you know into off-shelf promotions where they're where they're strong enough so there's an example of the gondola end there for impulse as an example there for the gondola end for bws and what we've done what we've done on there and we can incorporate snacking at the top as well which seems to have worked very well 
Um, and that there's a, there's an example of all of the all of the gondola ends we've we've done. So we've pulled together a BWS end, an impulse end, a grocery and non-food end, and also um, because it was a specific request from the retailer, we pulled together a, a Sainsbury's end where they they wanted to sort of really showcase immediately as as the store came on board look the, to show the customers and consumers that this is a Sainsbury's store you know it's a Sainsbury's led store it's got a lot of Sainsbury's products in there to really drive foot forward and, and and bring that price perception down as well and that worked and that worked very well and look that that ends now being utilized as a seasonal end so I think when in there yesterday there's some barbecue stuff a few weeks before that it was obviously um Easter and before that was Valentine's Day so it can be used as a seasonal end throughout the year but we draw those up for the retailers and provide them And look, don't take my word for it. There's the there's the actual proof in the pudding. There's the execution in store, which is I know so crucial for all of you suppliers to see. We make sure that we we deliver on what we say we're going to do. You know, if we if we draw up gondola ends like that and send them to the retailers, that's what the re we expect the retailer ends to look like, and and that is what they look like. So, um, so fantastic looking um, gondola ends there. And we look, we're, we're always looking to improve that. Uh, and improve on those deals, which is why we're constantly in meetings with Sainsbury's and, and pushing for more and, and talking to your suppliers about getting more support for promotions, which is which is really important. So I guess this, so. The summary of that before I go into the sort of virtual store tour is, you know, there's a huge amount of experience and retail expertise within the Simply Fresh team. I, I don't add the numbers up because I'd get into trouble because there's too, <laughs> there's too many years between us all. Uh, spanning across all types of sector as well, so not just not just convenience, multiple retail, independence, forecourts, cash and carry, symbol wholesale, the, the whole sector. Um, we've got a strong infrastructure within the team to win and grow in this sector. Uh, talking to Sarah earlier, I think, which is really important and an exciting time actually, because there's 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 not been much new competition or any new competition really, probably since Simply Fresh. Um, you know, we've got the full support of winning, you know, award winning product ranges, promotions, all backed with an award winning supply chain from Sainsbury's. You know, I couldn't think of a much better sort of retail partner to have. Strong, a really strong pipeline of, of um, lead and independent retailers signed up. So we've got nine stores uh, in the pipeline to get onboarded and completed by the end of July. Uh, on top of that, I was told this morning that we've had four signatures this week from some really, really strong retailers, really key retailers, all of which most of you would most of you would know. Um, you know, some 45, 55k a week turnover stores, which is really, really exciting for us. Um, and we're constantly investing and growing the company owned estate, obviously, and keen on driving, driving that and, and the in-store disciplines. Um, so we actually have access as well to JS local sites that JS don't want anymore. So disposal sites. Now JS don't want them because they're doing 45, 55 K a week turnover and they can't make that work, which is blows my mind, but it's the truth. Um, you know, most of their stores are doing 90 to 100, 150 K a week. Um, but look, we'll, we'll, we'll use that to our advantage. So we've purchased three of those stores already, one in Hull, one in Bournemouth, one in the Midlands. They're coming on board very shortly. And I believe we've put a bid in for a further 20 XJS local sites, which would be really exciting if we can if, if, if we can pull that off, if we can get those stores, that'd be fantastic. Um, we deliver on range and promotional compliance. You, you've already seen it. Uh, um, first class in store execution and we look to continue to do that because that's what's that's what's important it's important that we do that especially if we're working with key suppliers key branded suppliers and we really you know really hope that you want to work with us and grow your sales and distribution and brand awareness um, and that's that's pretty much it i think from a from a commercial aspect so i'm going to attempt now to try and run the video and talk you just briefly through what we did with steve bassett's store in particular and some key points on sort of like a virtual retail tour so i'll attempt to do that now uh, 
Um, a second. Can someone let me know if you can see that? Can you see yeah, that? Yes, I can see it. Good stuff. I'll try and play it and pause it as we go to so talk through it. So obviously this is the, this is the oak tree store, obviously brand new fascia. You've got the Sainsbury, look, it's quite important to see there. You've got the Sainsbury's tie in. So it's quite clear to, to customers that they know that the Sainsbury's products and Sainsbury's inside. Obviously the ATM machine. This is quite important here because this window, this window, these double windows before was blocked up and there was two rather large cooks or four large cooks freezers taking up uh, majority of this space here which we felt wasn't probably the wasn't probably the right thing to walk into um we've made sure that now here we have we have a flat we have a really good floral stand and floral display and that that's an example of one of the products i was talking about earlier that people just don't think sell well in convenience generally um and he was a bit nervous at first he just puts he said look we gave him some options of some 10 pounds 15 pounds 20 pound bouquet of flowers and he said no look can we start at five pounds so he said yeah that's no problem we can do that and um he's done an absolutely fantastic job so if you can imagine looking at the store now the look and feel of the store you're looking in at fresh flowers this whole this whole piece here will have pineapples lemons oranges apples just really bright colorful fresh produce which looks absolutely fantastic as you walk in it's a great unit this and then right here you can see where's where we put all the fresh bread and cakes and pastries and things so it's, it's really inviting as you as you walk into the store So just stopping it here, just for a look here. So the shopper flow clearly obviously is, is to come in here and, and turn right. We've got our gondola ends here. So we've got the grocery and non-food here because that's where grocery is. We have the Sainsbury's end here. This is the impulse end, obviously. Uh, because he's a, near a school and he over-indexes massively on confectionery, we've got a big confectionery area here full of hanging bags, which makes sense right opposite the tills. And then this is the BWS promotional end that he has here leading round into, into BWS. It's coming into the store straight into the end, as I, as I mentioned here, you'll see, you'll see fresh bread, obviously fresh produce here. Uh, meat, fish and produce over here. In this section here, you've even seen um, is where we do the dine-in meal. So you have the, the option straight in there next to all of the meat and fish as you'd expect to see. This is mainly grocery on the left hand side here and then across here you're going to dairy there's still some more ready meals pizzas uh, and you're going to this whole bay here is fresh milk milk and cream cheese and spreads and yogurts obviously you'll notice obviously the the palmets across the top really really you know they look really really smart it's all it's all sort of really well done aesthetically internally it's all part of the store refit So this area here, as I mentioned, you coffee, coffee to go, um, cited here. Obviously, always looking at new innovation, which is why Fwip are in there. Uh, we've got some uh, slush machines here. Steve Bassett, I think he's quite famous for his slush machines because he's got he's obviously got multiple sites, and some of his sites are down in Weymouth. And he decided one year that he was going to do. I think it was Thatcher's or he did a cider um, slush, which went viral. I think he had over a million views and he had people from America asking him how he made them, what he was doing. And, uh, and it all went a bit silly, <laughs> which he quite enjoys. I think if you speak to him about it, he's also got a Tango ice blast machine that's due to come in as well because he wants to put that in there. So look, he's always up to speed in terms of, you know what's new in the market and what's going to drive a bit more footfall and, and this whole area here 
looks a lot better than this actually on the in, in real life than on the 3D, but he's got all, all your grenade bars, all of your um healthy snacking and snacking products to go to go there, which is right. And, and and adjacent to this here is is where the impulse crisps and snacks sit, which is the right place for it to be, given that the the fresh meal deal sits in here where the chillers are as well. So obviously there's a post office store here you've got a lot of stationery and cards and things just to just to really go hand in hand with the with the post office offering which you must have if you've got a post office again as we said we don't look to remove suppliers from there we want more suppliers in so he wanted to keep cooks in so he as he got rid of two of the freezers because four was probably too many but he's kept two of the freezers um He's kept to the freezers here in place, obviously, which is which is which is great, and they'll continue to do well. And then into BWS, and and look, the only thing really, I guess, to say apart from what a fantastic range of beers, wines, and spirits he has, he's really opened up on the IPAs and the punk IPAs and 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 the brew dogs and and all of those products because um, JS obviously have a really extensive range of those products, and and they seem to be working really well and sort of growing his sales. And that pretty much completes the sort of store, uh, the store tour. Thanks for that, Nick. <coughs> Sorry. Um, really, it is a really great yeah, store. Thanks for the that. presentation. Thanks for, thanks for the store tour. You're welcome. Mm, exactly. It looks lovely, doesn't it? Yeah, it's a great Yeah. Um, Self strapped the time. Is 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 there a new opportunity for suppliers to have their products in store? And if so, how how as a supplier would I go about getting into the store? What's like the sort of best way? Um, and also, is is like the retail equipment all provided through Sainsbury's, or is there another opportunity for guys no, to get third party the retail, uh, guys there? The retail equipment I think comes through. I'd have to talk to our our store development guy, a guy called Michael Boat, Michael Bokes, who manages mm -hmm. that. So he'll manage the refits. Actually, everything from I mean, the shelving comes from Belgium because it's unique and all of that sort of stuff. But I can put I could put anyone who's interested in in that in touch with Michael to see how they'd go about talking to him about that. It's not a problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'd be appreciated. Um, just uh, one, Sarah, do you have anything? Yeah, so just one quick question. I realise we're running out of time. Um, as I said in my presentation, we've seen um, the rise of things like Gander and Too Good To Go. Are those things um, kind of um, apps that, that um, Simply Press and, and Sainsbury's that will support, you know, using those to, to kind of help with the food waste? Yeah, I think so. I, I need to speak probably more with Sainsbury's about what they're doing on that because they're doing they'll be doing way more than I can give them credit for on here, definitely. Um, and it's something that if, if something, anything that we're showing an interest in, obviously they'll go out their way to get us all of the details on and help us in any way that they can. So that's something I can definitely take up with them to see, to see, see what they're doing. They're always looking for innovative ways of anything from saving on packaging through deliveries and they're, they're 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 absolutely all over that so that's fine i can have a conversation and get some more detail on that oh that's great so of the guys who are on the call today if they want to get in touch they'll will pass um their details on to you yeah by all means absolutely fine i mean i've, I've talked to a, a, a huge number of suppliers obviously in the supplier base already um but a, still a huge number that i haven't spoken to so yeah by all means by all means give them my contact details and that and we can have a conversation. Brilliant, thank you. Brilliant, okay. Well, let's, let's wrap the session up there. So thank you everyone for joining. Thank you, Nick, for coming on a, um, and showing us the store and the uh, presentation for Simply Fresh. And Sarah, thank you for that presentation as well earlier. So- My pleasure. Thank you, Thank Nick. you, everyone. Thanks, bye-bye.